How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Elvis Junction Reviews. And today we are looking at our first Intermountain Railway Company uh, products on the channel. Today we are looking at two HO scale R70 15 mechanical reefer cars in the UPFE yellow paint uh, scheme. UPFE is Union Pacific Free Express. We have two of these, as you can see here. So we're going to actually open up this one here because they're pretty much the same product. Anyway, let's move the other one off to the side, and I hope everybody's having a good day today. I've been having a good day. These just came in today, so I'm really excited to actually take a look at these. This is the second Intermountain product I've ever purchased. I did buy one of their 60-foot um, flat cars back when I used to do modern uh, trains, but no longer anymore. It comes in this type of package where it's kind of a clamp down, and it's almost like a clamshell in theory. And here it is. It's got this protective plastic over top of it. And there it is. Oh, boy. All right. We're going to move this off to the side. And there is our refrigerator car. All right. Let's get into some history. Okie dokie. So I really don't know a lot of history about these uh, mechanical refrigerator cars. I can tell you that they're known as the R7015 mechanical refrigeration car. If I'm correct, these were built somewhere in the 60s uh, when mechanical refrigeration was really starting to pick up and they were stopped using the big ice chunks. I apologize for the birds. Um, but anyway, this car is painted in the UPFE yellow scheme, which was very common uh, during the 90s. And this scheme pretty much disappeared when UP started using the Armin Reefer scheme, which is the all white and then the big Armin logo. So let's get into some details, starting with the front slash rear. Alrighty, so we are currently looking at what I classify the front of the freight car. And you see there's a lot of detail. It's Intermountains, so they they're and they have been they've been trying to compete with uh scale trains, Athrum Genesis. So that is really where why there's so much detail on this car, because they like to put on detail, and I appreciate that. Starting at the top here, you can see this little divot here. I'm gonna explain that when we look at the roof of the car. Up here is a grab iron, and here's our brake wheel, and it works down all the way down to the bottom of the car. And unfortunately, you can see it's kind of bent here, so we have to take a few points off of that. Here is our ladder that works its way from the top down to the bottom of the car, so you can climb up to the top here. There is a step right here, I guess, to help you, um, if you put your foot up here, to really turn the, the brake handle here. We have a grab iron right here. Right below that is the bad order board here. So if there's something wrong with the car, you slap the bad order on here and they will take it out and repair it. We have another we have another step ladder here. Here is our number, UP452355. We also have some, uh, it is legible actually, uh, legible writing right here and right down here. This says roller bearings. Unfortunately, I cannot actually see what that says. It looks like SPRQD5. Um, I'll have to zoom in and I'll put a little subtitle if I need to, if I was wrong. Here is a little walkway here. So if you want to climb up here, you, you step here, grab that grab iron here, and then you make your way to the other side of the car. Here is our coupler cut bar right here. It does not move, unfortunately. Oh, eh, no, it does not move. Ah, uh, that looks like the air hose right there. And here is our metal coupler. So it's not really this, it's pretty much the same thing on the back apart from the brake wheel. And one extra little difference here. That, that's a little nub right here. That is the exhaust port for the, for the, um, for the refrigerator because this thing is diesel powered. Alrighty, so let's look at some side detail. Alrighty, so we're looking at the side of the of the car here, uh, at the refrigeration side actually. And right off the bat, you can see the exhaust port that I mentioned earlier, and you can see these grates. Unfortunately, they are not see-through, but this is the but these grates allow the air to go inside the car. The diesel generator on the inside in this area here takes that air, cycles it through something that makes it cold, and then it throws that air inside the car going off to the right. And that keeps whatever's inside fresh, cold, and ready for the market when it comes out. Anyway, we have this uh, ladder right here, and we have two uh, step bars right here, which is actually quite surprising. We have this little legible uh, plaque here that says SUVA MP66. Excuse me. I believe this right here is a fuel gauge indicator. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, please. You can see the ribs of the bulkheads here. 
which is very nice. I like that. Here we see UPFE, Union Pacific Free Express, 452355. We have our load limit and our load weights along with the numbers. Right here it says UP9... Uh, 9... Six, so I believe September of 1996. That was probably when this car was refurbished, repainted, and all that. It probably says the same thing on the other car. Indeed, it does. So I'm pretty sure these cars were built in the 60s, but it was probably redone here uh, in back in September of 1996, which is pretty cool. All right, moving on to the door section here. We will get to this little chunk right here in a minute. Here's our door. It does not open, unfortunately, but we do have some separately applied uh handles here along with another bigger step ladder there is a grab iron right here here is the lever for the door you roll that to the right and the door should unlock and roll to the right here on these rollers and you can actually see the little davits here that actually stop the door from just flying off its hinges so that we don't have any problems oh and there is two more bad order boards one is bigger than the other i'm not sure why Moving off to the right here, you can see the lovely Union Pacific Shield, which, is be which has been a staple since the very beginning, I'm pretty sure. Here is our little, here's the classification for the car, R7015. I believe the R is for refrigeration. I do not know what the 70 or the 15 mean, but if somebody does know, please let me know, because I'm not really an expert on this, and I do mention this in the comments. I'm not an expert, so if I miss anything, let me know. I'm always glad to hear what you guys have to say and, exp and expand my knowledge of this so I can really be good at this. But anyway, here's some illegible... Actually, no, it is legible in the camera. It's just not legible to me because I'm a little farther away and I am as blind as a bat. But that should be legible to you. It looks like exterior. Ew. And that's all I... And there's cubic feet. I can unfortunately read that number. That looks like 4253 right there. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. There is an illegible plaque here and there's another step ladder. And there is a walkway, I'm sorry, a grab iron right here and another step ladder right there. Okay, so now we've done the side, let's look at the bottom of the car because Intermountain likes to put detail on the bottom of their car. Alrighty, so we're looking at the bottom of the car here. These two tanks here are actually the diesel fuel tanks that power the generator up top here off to the left. We have some air hose and brake hose um, and air plumbing right here. We have our air reservoir. We also have a... This, I believe, is what activate, activates the brakes here. If you were to turn the, um, if you were to turn the brake wheel, this, I believe, goes to the right, and this part comes off to the left. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Please do let me know. And it also runs here to the bogey right there. Okay, so now let's look at the top. Alrighty, so we're kind of looking at the top of the car here, and you can see those little davits that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now, what those were are were the holders for the walkway that used to run the whole length of the car because back in the 60s air brakes were still kind of in their infancy i want to say so they used to have these walkways that span the length of the car and that allowed the brakeman to walk across the car without falling off so that he could make his way over to the brake wheel here and turn it uh, so basically when the air brakes really became more of a thing they didn't need those walkways so they decided eh let's just take them off and it makes it look very interesting on the top and you can also see the riveted not riveted it's corrugated here on the top but it looks pretty cool regardless all right so let's get to my final thoughts so overall these cars are pretty good looking i love the amount of detail they have uh the only issue that i do have is actually not with the car but the fact that there is no uh, pop-up diagram so if something breaks you're kind of screwed there's not even a part list for you to look for which is a bit of a downside and i really wish Aaron Mountain would do that but aside from that i think the cars look great they have a lot of detail uh they feel pretty good in the hand weight wise they don't look like they're gonna break anything off but then again uh these are intermountain i really haven't worked with intermountain all that much so i don't really know what to expect from them but i will definitely be reviewing more products of theirs in the future they have been releasing uh stuff recently they did actually just make a new website in the last i want to say few months where you can actually buy directly from them instead of having to go to a hobby store or your local dealer and, and reserve from them I got these two at Midwest Model Railroad for just under $100, thanks to a little bit of a, a discount I had. Um, uh, you're going to have to find that out for yourself. But anyway, I highly recommend you get these. They are still in stock, but they are running out. They are selling out fast, so I highly recommend to get a couple of these if you do the 90s. So, 
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button and also subscribe if you have not and hit the notification bell to know when I upload. I upload uh, on Mondays and Fridays at Mondays and Fridays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But anyway, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.